Hello. Thank you all. Um, usually I get to just show pretty pictures of beautiful animals. So um, I feel like at the moment I'm uh, deer in headlights in front of a very big truck. <clears throat> I was first introduced to the uh, phenomenon of oceanic plastic um, when I saw it kill um, an albatross chick that I had come to know because I was spending a few months on Kiri Atoll, which is the most northwest island in the Hawaiian island chain. This island is 1,000 miles northwest of Honolulu. It's, it's arguably the most remote place on the planet. It's the farthest from any continent. Um, and it's, uh, if they drop you off, they say, well, we'll see you in a couple of months. And you don't see anybody until then. Um, this was specimen number one. So this was specimen number two the next day after, we found, after I found out that that's what was happening. This was known that plastic builds up in the proventriculus, which is the first part of a stomach of a bird. And now we open the package. It's pretty horrible. So this is specimen number two. And this is what was inside specimen number two. It's 13.9 ounces of plastic. That's about two and a half baseballs when it's dry. So when it's wet, it obviously is heavier than that. Can you imagine being a little fledgling albatross trying to learn to fly with such excess baggage? So that's the first time I saw plastic. And I didn't see some for a while, but I got introduced to um, these ocean slicks, which are an oceanographic feature, which are a function of the tide hitting vertical surface, as here off the coast of Kona. It sends up these little swirls. And this are the lovely creatures that you can find inside of an ocean, in a surface slick. So this is when you go hunting inside of a surface lick for what the target of that magazine story was, which was marine microfauna. You can find things like baby swordfish. And this is what a surface lick looks from the inside. And this is, next little thing is a video that my friend Stephanie Gordon made with some friends of hers who work for NOAA who study surface slicks. see the, the sort of the glassy or oily-like uh, water that kind of runs from that direction south. They become more easily identifiable uh, as the wind picks up. So these uh, folks from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, they work for the fisheries department. They want to know what the function of surface slicks are in the relation to the game fish and food fish that uh, uh, breed and, and hatch in that part of the world so they can properly manage it. Um, but then I saw, uh, uh, was told about, because I was last year when the magazine was working on their single topic issue of plastic, there was a conversation that started that I wasn't able to, I didn't have the picture. I mean, I'd seen it, plastic and, and, the, and the ocean, and, and what, it, what is the interaction of plankton and plastic. Um, but I was able to, with the support of the National Geographic Society, um, 
to find that out. So I asked these guys, who, were, who they, because I'd heard that they were finding plastic in the slicks. And so I wanted to go and find out just exactly what that was, because I knew that slicks contained the most beautiful plankton sample that I'd ever seen. And I've seen hundreds of them, because um, I love plankton. If you ever wanted to find the most diversity, the most phylum in a single sample, um, there are 33 phylum um, in the animal kingdom, and your average plankton sample probably has a dozen. I mean, it's the easiest place to find the most variety of life anywhere. So this is what they were finding in some surface slicks in 2017. This, is a, this was, the shape of this is kind of like a double page magazine spread. It's, but it's a single sample, just two frames of it. But that is the plastic found in one 400 cubic meter sample of a surface slick, which is where all sorts of animals are going to breed and reproduce and hide amongst the little other flotsam and jetsam that's sort of natural material. Um, 400 cubic meters is about a fifth of this room, if I added it up right when I pasted it off earlier. So just like, just a bit over there. It's not a lot of water. Um, that's a lot of plastic. And it's off the coast of Hawaii, which is the most remote island chain in the world. And this is not local plastic. This is, this is you know. So this is a wet sample. This was this last summer. So we got some file fish there. Kind of hard to find because there's so much plastic. Um, there's some Portuguese man of war. There's some algae. Get a little closer. These just you see the two file fish. A little barnacle larva. some uh, larval crabs, then we get even a little closer. That, that file fish is about 50 days old. He's two and a half inches long. So this is trying to, 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 to sort of see how much plastic and how much life and what kind of life I t trying to figure out how to, that visual puzzle of how to actually really show it. So on the left are all the animals that we got out of another sample, same sample size. And on the right is all the plastic. So on the left are uh, more than 26 species of creatures, fish and invertebrates. And on the right, they're not done with the analysis yet, but at some point there's gonna be a little attached to this specimen number is gonna tell you exactly how many pieces of plastic, how many species of uh, animals, and then it's kept so that 10 years from now, they have this at the, the, the hard evidence of the state of the world at the moment. Here's another sample. This is the whole, the whole sample. This is another one. It's just over and over and over again. And they're not looking for plastic. They're actually trying to just survey. They're actually looking for the fish inside the slicks because they work for the fisheries department. But this is just what comes up. Thank you very much. <laughs>